What is up everybody, it is the Greenest Lantern, also known as Paul in real life. Uh, today's video is going to be about a certain topic regarding the PS3 controller. Now the PS3 controller is can be um, used within Windows. All you need is a PS3 controller and a internet service and you can do this no problem okay so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to a website which will be in the link description and within that website uh, you're going to click on this one here or this one whatever you want to go on doesn't worry me doesn't matter um, as long as you've got either a excuse me a 64-bit or a 32-bit. I'll explain a little bit of what 64-bit and 32-bit is down below. Um, anyway, after you've done that, after you've installed it, you just click on it and you'll do this. I've already done it, so I don't need to do it again. Okay, so you'll just need to click on it and install it. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by installing it because, yeah. Alrighty, um, after you've done that, and you've installed it correctly what you'll do it'll come up with um, n dot dot help bracket motion enjoy and it'll come up with this little website here and that's basically you know telling you what it's about and it gives you some support and whatnot but for now we're just gonna leave it like that now um, you're going to uh, open this up all right doesn't matter if you run it as the administrator or not then you're going to click on um, right now as you get it it will probably come stock as PS2 or it will come stock as um, PS1 don't click on anything just yet go on drive manager don't click Bluetooth because if you click Bluetooth then um, I will probably do another video on that uh, when I do get a Bluetooth adapter. I think I've got a Bluetooth adapter lying around somewhere. I'll probably make a video on it. Anyway, um, let's click on the driver side of things. We don't need to worry about that. Yes, just Windows having a moment. Now, um, what you're going to do now is you're going to connect. It, you should have actually connected it before because I'm silly. Uh, you should have connected it before and you'll hear a little hub thingy and what you'll do is you just need to install it go to install all it'll come up with a long list of things will come up with a satisfying noise to it too and you're going to click it again and go load driver and once again you've got that satisfying noise you're going to go back to profiles after you've done all that and automatically it should uh, come up with um, an indicator, a battery indicator. It's not really a battery indicator in the sense that um, it looks like one but it's not. It's just really your uh, um, controller going from 1 to 4 and if it's going from 1 to 4 that's a good sign. Also another good sign is if it actually detects it. So yeah, don't need to worry about disconnecting it because you don't want to disconnect it. Um, now another way you can test it as well is by testing to see if there's a vibration on it. If there's a vibration on it then you are good to go. And if you get a vibration test on it then you're definitely good to go. Okay, alright guys. Um, that is it for this tutorial. Um, it's been a while since I've made a tutorial. Uh, feel free to rate the video, comment on the video, and uh, be sure to subscribe. And this is The Greenest Lantern, signing off.